I'm Elisha Brookover, and I'm a librarian for the Department of Defense Dependent Schools in Okinawa, Japan. And I'm going to be reading Looking for Alaska by John Green. I love this book because I've watched kids get tears in their eyes when they read it because they're so connected to this, the uh, characters. And because I've had kids tell me that it's the first book that they've actually read all the way through in years. I sat down next to him and he looked over at me and suddenly said, listen, I'm not going to be your entree to Culver Creek social life. Uh, okay, I said, but I could hear the words catch in my throat. I just carried this guy's couch beneath a white hot sun and now he didn't like me? Basically, you got two groups here, he explained, speaking with increasing urgency. You've got the regular boarders, like me, and then you've got the weekday warriors. They board here, but they're all rich kids who live in Birmingham and go home to their parents' air-conditioned mansions every weekend. Those are the cool kids. I don't like them, and they don't like me, and so if you came here thinking that you were hot shit at public school, so you'll be hot shit here, you best not be seen with me. You did go to public school, didn't you? Uh, I said. Absent-mindedly, I began picking at the cracks in the couch's leather, digging my fingers into the foamy whiteness. Right. You did, probably. Because if you had gone to a private school, your freaking shorts would fit. He laughed. I wore my shorts just below my hips, which I thought was cool. Finally, I said, Yeah, I went to public school, but I wasn't hot shit there, Chip. I was regular shit. Ha! That's good. And don't call me Chip. Call me the Colonel. I stifled a laugh. The Colonel? Yeah, the Colonel. And we'll call you, uh, Pudge. Huh? Pudge, the colonel said, because you're skinny. It's called Irony Pudge. Heard of it? Now, let's go get some cigarettes and start this year off right. He walked out of the room, again just assuming I'd follow, and this time I did. Mercifully, the sun was descending toward the horizon. We walked five floors down to room 48. A dry erase board was taped to the door using duct tape. In blue marker it read, Alaska has a single. The colonel explained to me that one, this was Alaska's room, and that two, she had a single room because the girl who was supposed to be her roommate got kicked out at the end of last year, and that three, Alaska had cigarettes, although the colonel neglected to ask whether four, I smoked, which five, I didn't. He knocked once loudly. Through the door, a voice screamed, oh my God, come in, you short little man, because I have the best story. We walked in. I turned to close the door behind me, and the colonel shook his head and said, after seven, you have to leave the door open if you're in a girl's room. But I barely heard him, because the hottest girl in all of human history was standing before me in cut-off jeans and a peach tank top. And she was talking over the colonel, talking loud and fast. So, first day of summer, I'm in Grand Old Vine Station with this boy named Justin, and we're at his house watching TV on the couch, and mind you, I'm already dating Jake. Actually, I'm still dating him, miraculously enough, but Justin is a friend of mine from when I was a kid, so we're watching TV and literally chatting about the SATs or something, and Justin puts his arm around me and I think, oh, that's nice, we've been best friends for so long and this is totally comfortable, and we're just chatting, and then I'm in the middle of a sentence about analogies or something, and like a honk, he reaches down and honks my boo. Honk! A much too firm, two to three second honk. And the first thing I thought was, okay, how do I extricate this claw from my boob before it leaves permanent marks? And the second thing I thought was, God, I can't wait to tell Takumi and the Colonel. The Colonel laughed. I stared, stunned partly by the force of the voice emanating from the petite, but God, curvy wall, and partly by the gigantic stacks of books that lined her walls.